now in the given question uh, we have to reverse the array so what is the logic uh, this is my array right uh, 2 4 6 8 10 and the output the desired output is 10 8 6 4 2 this is the de uh, desired output we want so how we gonna do this what is the logic behind uh, this question and i want to tell you guys uh, when you start to think about this question you will think that i am create i will create a new array uh, suppose uh, let us consider that this is a arr array i am going to create another array with the same size arr1 is equals to new int in this size is arr dot length uh, the catch here the catch is we don't uh, need to create another array in the question we are not going to create another array in the array itself how we gonna change the elements so the logic here is we don't need to first of all create a new array because it is not efficient way and it will consume a lot of more memory and after that uh, we are going to run our uh, loop our uh, uh, we are going to reverse our array in just a linear time complexity so a linear complexity is nothing but we are running only one loop so we have to run one loop and we don't need to create excess memory in our computer so whatever the array given here using the array itself we have to uh, ch uh, swap or change the element in order to reverse the array so how are we gonna do this what is the logic behind this question the logic is first of all i will give you two minutes so how are you gonna uh, do this you do you are not gonna uh, create a new array and you are going to do it in linear time complexity how are you gonna do this what is the logic behind it think about it first right now the logic is first of all this is my first element that is 0 index 1 2 3 4 and this is my starting index right and this is my ending index so let me calculate mid here mid is equals to start plus end divided by 2 that is 0 plus 4 divided by 2 that is nothing but 2 so my value of mid is 2 so this is my mid index now we have already learned about swapping two number swapping two number so what is the logic we use a temporary variable and we used to swap two numbers right so i hope you have understood the question and remember that particular question using that question only we are going to solve this particular these question this reverse of a reversing of array question now here uh, what we gonna do let me erase these things the logic is i am going to change the values of first element with the last element so i am going to change the values here basically swapping with the first element with the last element after that uh, second last element with the uh, uh, second last element with the second element second first first uh, second element with the second last element by just swapping the values we can simply uh, reverse the array here this is a mid element so we don't need to swap this much so this is the logic so what is the logic here the second step is first step we know how to swap two numbers after that we are going to run a loop for for int i is equals to 0 and i should be less than n by 2 i should be less than or equals to n by 2 after that i plus plus in this what i'm gonna do i'm going to create an integer type variable int temp this will hold this is a temporary variable basically so this will hold the first uh, element so first element is nothing but i this will hold i value after it uh, in the first half element arr of i is equals to arr of n minus i minus 1 after it uh, in the arr of n minus i minus 1 i am going to assign the value of temporary so this is how the swapping of or the reversing of array work and finally third step is print our array basically run a, run a loop and print array that's all so these are the steps we are going to follow to swap any uh, uh, given array right let me code this thing and we will understand it after coding you will understand it better here i am going to create my function public static void so this function will reverse my array so reverse let me write the name of the function reverse after it int arr right that's all after it in this i am going to create a variable int n is equals to arr dot length arr dot length after it i am going to run a for loop for int i is equals to 0 
after that i should be less than or equals to n by 2 after that i plus plus in the loop i am going to create a uh, temporary variable temp is equals to error of i after that error of i is equals to error of n minus 1 minus i after that uh, i am going to assign error of n minus i minus 1 is equals to temp that's all that's all and in the main, uh, for loop in the main program i am going to create a uh, array arr is equals to is equals to 1 2 3 4 5 let us consider this is my array after that i am going to call my reverse function so this reverse function will reverse my array after that in the main program itself i am printing my elements after calling reverse program so int i is equals to 0 and i should be less than or equals to error dot length error dot length after that i plus plus in this i am printing system dot out dot print my elements nothing but error of i so this is how i am going to uh, reverse the uh, array so let me run this code so you can see that we have reversed our array so the uh, given provided array is 1 2 3 4 5 and after reversing the our output is 5 4 3 2 1 i can uh, print the all these things in one line especially let me uh, remove ln here let me remove ln here and give a space save this thing and run you can see that uh, our provided array in the 13th line in trr is equals to 1 2 3 4 5 and our output is 5 4 3 2 1 so we have successfully reversed the elements in our array in given question we have to uh, print the pairs of an array so this is my uh, array right uh, 2 4 6 uh, 8 1 so let me write the indexes first 0 1 2 3 4 these are the indexes so what are pairs any two elements combining any two elements is known as one pair so here 2 comma 4 is a pair after 2 comma 6 is a pair after 2 comma 8 is a pair after 2 comma 10 is a pair uh, after that uh, here 4 comma 6 is a pair after 4 comma 8 is a pair after 4 comma 10 are the pairs after 6 8 is a pair after 6 10 is a pair and finally 8 10 is a pair so no single element is uh, considered as a pair so pair should be uh, have should have at least two should have two elements right so here 2, 4, 2, 6, 2, 8, 2, 10, after 4, 6, 4, 8, 4, 10, after 6, 8, 6, 10, and 8, 10 are total number of pairs in our given array. So, uh, we can write as a 2, 4, and 4, 2 are the same. So, we didn't write as a, uh, we didn't write a 2, 4, and 4, 2 multiple times because the 2, 4, or 4, 2, 2, 4, or 4, 2 are nothing but same elements, right? So, basically, these uh, uh, pair will have same element so we didn't write uh, is this multiple times so the logic here is we are going to run a nested loop we are going to run a nested loop so the pseudo code for this question is first of all we are going to run a outer loop so our outer loop is for int i is equals to zero after that i should be less than or equals to err uh, should be less than err dot length after that i plus plus in this I am going to create a current variable which will hold the which will store the values of my first uh, element after that it will pair with the second element so here 2 4 we have paired with 2 4 after that 2 6 after that 2 8 after that 2 10 so here 2 is my current element after pairing all the elements with 2 we have changed the value of 2 we have changed the value of current by 4 after that we have paired with 2 6 4 6 after that 4 8 4 8 after that 4 10 here the current element is 4 and we have paired all the remaining elements with my current element after that after pairing all the elements with my current element i have changed the values of current so i am going to create a current here int current is equals to err of i so it will store the current element after that inner loop in the inner loop i am going to run for int j so uh, how i am going to initialize j you can see that uh, this is my first element and i am going to pair with the other elements 
so here can i write that my j will start from i plus 1 because i am not pairing 2 comma 2 because these are the same elements and uh, uh, when we are forming a pair the elements which are provided should be different so i am going to create uh, start my j with the next element after my current element so this is my current element that is nothing but arr of i so i am going to start my j of uh, uh, to the next index of my i so i am going to start j is equal to i plus 1 and j should be less than arr dot length after j plus plus in this i am going to print system dot out dot print a brace basically a parenthesis plus uh, my current element plus after that a uh, uh, space plus and uh, arr of j plus closing parenthesis so this is the code for printing the pairs of my uh, element printing the pairs of elements in an array so this is the pseudo code for printing pairs let me uh, dry run this here for a little bit uh, for uh, two or four pairs let me dry run this so we will start my i is equal to zero and j is equal to i plus one we will start our j with one so i am going to print my current here is arr of i so arr of i is uh, here zero one two three four arr of zero is two uh, zero arr of zero is two so my current will be two so the current here is two right so uh, the conditions mostly the given conditions are true so we will come into inner loop inner loop condition is also true so we will print finally uh, bracket after that current element that is 2 after that error of j what is error of j error of 1 what is error of 1 is 4 so 2 comma 4 right after that we will increment the value of uh, j by 2 so 2 comma error of 2 is 6 after that uh, we will increment the value of uh, uh, 2 is uh, 2 as 3 after 2 comma error of 3 that is 6 that is 8 sorry 8 after that 2 comma 10 so we will increment it by 4 after it will become 5 now the condition is false so we will change i is equal to 1 and current will become again 4 now we will start again uh, the j value with uh, uh, i plus 1 that is 2 now we will print 4 comma 6 comma 4 comma 8 after that 4 comma 10 and will increment on each iterations 2 comma 3 comma 4 comma 5 again the condition is false so the control will go into outer loop i will become 2 and simply will print 6 comma 8 and 6 comma 10 here the current is 6 because the error of 2 is 6 and j should be 1 uh, uh, 3 4 2 iterations after that uh, i will become 3 and now the current is 8 current is 8 so j value is uh, 4 that is i, uh, I plus 1 right i is here 3 and j is here 4 so we will print 8 comma 10 and finally i will become 5 and uh, uh, i will become 4 and uh, j will become 5 again uh, in the uh, i is equal to 4 the current element is 8 the current element is sorry 10 and now j value is 5 condition is false and i will become 5 and we will stop our both inner loop and outer loop and finally we got our pairs here whatever the pairs we desired got here as out our output so this is the working uh, and the pseudo code for finding the pairs in an array so i am going to create my function public static void size function because we are not gonna return anything so void after that uh, uh, what we are doing we are basically pay, uh, pairing each element so pair space in that i am going to pass my array in t in trr after that in this uh, what i am going to do first of all i am going to run my outer loop int i is equals to 0 and i should be less than or equals to yeah uh, i should be less than arr dot length dot length after it i plus plus here in the inner loop uh, before the before starting in a loop i am going to create my current variable so current will store the uh, current element that is nothing but 2 4 2 6 2 8 here 2 is current after completing uh, uh, inner loop i will change the value of current again by changing the value of i so current is equals to that will store the uh, first element right now in the first iteration it will store the first element after that my inner loop in the inner loop i am going to write int j is equals to our j will start from i plus 1 so whatever the value of i 
our j will start from uh, that value plus 1. So i plus 1, i plus 1 after that j should be less than arr dot length after that j plus plus. Here what I am going to do, I am going to print my first of all uh, parenthesis after that plus my current element, my current element plus uh, some space again after that plus my arr of j value right arr of j plus some space right that's all this is the code for printing the pairs of our uh, array now in the main program i am going to uh, write our array arr is equals to arr is equals to 2 4 6 2 4 6 8 10 and let me call my pairs functions and in the pair function i am going to call my uh, i am going to pass array as my input now let me run this code you after that you will see so you can see that the pairs we have formed is a 2 4 uh, 2 6 2 8 2 10 the whatever the pair we desired got the uh, we got this as output so let me uh, remove the spaces here such that it will look good so a uh, space here and remove space here and save this and run again you can see that we clearly got our output so these are the pairs that we wanted in our code so we have successfully printed the pairs of elements in our array so in the given question we have to print the subarrays so before we dive into question let us understand what are subarrays so subarrays are the continuous part of array so uh, to understand this let us take this is my array so uh, these are my uh, so this is the given array so here 2 comma 4 2 comma 4 comma 6 2 comma 4 comma 6 comma 8 and 2 comma 4 comma 6 comma 8 comma 10 are the valid subarrays i can say that these all things including 2 is uh, these all are the subarrays of my given array but but 4 comma 8 comma 10 is the elements present in my array but this is not a subarray because this is not a subarray because this is not in continuous fashion so the elements which are provided in the array should be con in continuous fashion then and only it will be a subarray for me then we, then and only i can say that the provided elements are the subarray for my uh, given array so here 2 is a subarray right after 2 comma 4 is a subarray and 2 comma 4 comma 6 is a subarray after 2 comma 4 comma 8 is a subarray and 2 comma 4 comma 6 comma 8 comma 10 is a subarray because this is the whole array right this is known as this is the concept of uh, subarray here 4 comma 8 comma 10 is not a valid subarray because the elements uh, present here uh, the elements uh, are present here in our main array but it is not in continuous fashion that's why the given elements that's why the 4 comma 8 comma 10 is not considered as a subarray so this is the concept of subarray now we are going to learn how to print subarrays and what are the logic behind this we have understood the meaning of subarray now let me write the what are the subarrays what are the subarrays uh, that can be possible for this array let me write uh, the number of subarrays here so here uh, 2 comma 4 after that 2 comma 4 comma 6 after that 2 comma 6 comma 8 after that 2 comma 4 2 comma sorry here 2 comma 4 comma 6 comma 8 after 2 comma 4 comma 6 comma 8 comma 10 these are the subarrays for 2 after that 4 comma 6 comma 8 comma 10 after that uh, 4 comma 6 4 comma 6 comma 8 these are the subarrays after 6 comma 8 after 6 comma 8 comma 10 and finally 8 comma 10 8 comma 10 and 10 these are the uh, two these are the total number of subarrays uh, that can be possible for my given array the total number is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 so they are totally 12 subarrays that can be possible for this given array so what is the logic behind it the logic is first of all let me write the pseudocode such that you will understand the code so let us write the pseudocode for this given question so first of all we are going to run our outer loop from int i is equals to 0 and i should be less than or equals to arr dot length arr dot length after that i plus plus 
in that i am going to create a start variable int start is equals to that will uh, that's gonna store the index of i so that will store the indexes these are the indexes right 0 1 2 3 4 so it will gonna store the value of i after that in the inner loop first inner loop int k int j is equals to i i am going to initialize the value of j by i after that j should be less than uh, here j should be less than a r r dot length after that i j plus plus in this i am going to create again int end variable that will store the value of j after that i am going to run again in the j for loop i am going to create another for loop this is known as three nested loops here we are using three nested loops after that in the inner loop again inner loop int k is equals to it will start from uh, value of start after that it will go to k should be less than or equals to end and in this i am going to increase k plus plus here what i am going to do i am going to do print is basically the value of k and a space right and finally uh, uh, another next line that's all so this is the pseudo code for printing the sub arrays of my given array so let me create my function public static void type function because i'm not gonna return anything i, I just have to print the sub pairs so sub array sub array in this i'm going to pass my array right so the first thing here is in the outer loop for int i is equals to zero and i should be less than or equals to uh, i should be less than arr dot length after it i plus plus in this i am going to uh, uh, initialize the start variable st is equals to i after it in the inner loop for int j is equals to value of i after it j should be less than arr dot length after it j plus plus here in the next in the inner loop again i am going to create ed that is nothing but end is equals to uh, j after that i am going to run in the j loop for loop again a nested loop for int k is equals to start and k should be less than or equals to end after that k plus plus in this i am going to print a i am going to print k value basically k value so k plus a space basically a space and after completing my loop i am going to print another uh, here here is the value system dot out next line so these are the space let me run, uh, here call my mm, sub array function for my array sub array and i am going to pass this value let me save this and run So let me run this code. You can see that these are the pairs 2, 2, 4, 2, 4, 6, 8, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and after it 4. These all totally the total number of sub arrays uh, that are present in my given array. So in this question, we have to find out the maximum sub array sum. So here we have this no, array 1, minus 2, 6, minus 1, 3. So the sub array starting with 1 is 1 itself. After it 1 comma minus 2, after it 1 comma minus 2 comma 6 and 1 comma minus 2 comma 6 comma minus 1, after it 1 comma minus 2 comma 6 comma minus 1 comma 3. So the sum of 1 is, uh, 1 will give 1, after it here the sum is minus 1, after it here 7, uh, 7 mi minus 2 that is 5, here the sum is 5, here uh, minus 3, after it plus 6 that gives us 3 plus 1. Here the sum will give us 4, after it here uh, uh, minus 3 plus 3, right? After it uh, mm, here the sum will give us 7. So uh, similarly the array sub arrays will start with minus 2 and so on. After it uh, the sub arrays will start with uh, uh, element 6 and so on. After it minus 1 uh, element, after it 3. So here we have to give the maximum sub arrays among all maximum sub array sum among all this sub arrays let us consider that 7 is the maximum sub array sum so we will print the 7 as my output so to do this question first of all we need uh, let us consider a small sub array let us consider a small array 
that is 1 uh, minus 3 and 2 is our array. So here uh, the total number of subarrays are 1, 1 comma minus 3, 1 comma minus 3 comma 2. After that minus 3, after that 2, minus 3 comma 2, after that finally 2. So these are the total number of subarrays for this particular array, right? So here the sum is 1. After that here uh, minus 2. After that here uh, 3 minus 3, 0. After that here minus 3. After that uh, minus 3 plus 2 that is minus 1 and finally 2. So here the maximum subarray uh, sum is 2. So here we will print 2 as my subarray. Subarray maximum subarray sum. I hope you have understood the question first of all. Now we will create two variables that is int current sum and we will initialize it with 0. After that we will create int maximum sum. Int maximum sum. Here we will initialize it with minus infinity that is integer dot minimum value minus infinity. After it at each iteration when we are checking uh, at uh, each iteration when we are checking subarrays uh, we will check we will do uh, current sum is equals to current sum plus arr of k. Right and uh, we are checking if my uh, current sum is greater than my maximum sum then do maximum sum is equals to current sum simply that's all and finally uh, after completing all iterations just to print my maximum sum so this is basically the code here in the place of printing the code for maximum subarray sum is similar to subarrays uh, uh, we will uh, that we did uh, in the previous question so in the place of printing subarrays we will write here current sum is equals to current sum plus arr of k after that after completing this loop in the second loop we will check if my current sum is greater than my maximum sum then do maximum sum is equals to current sum that's all and finally after completing all iterations just to print our maximum sum that's all so we will run our code for this particular uh, small array because we know that the maximum sum for this question is 2 so we will run our code and see here in the second loop we will initialize the current sum is equal to 0 after that in the outer loop we will initialize the maximum sum is equal to minus infinity so this is the code for finding maximum subarray sum so let me change the uh, function name max subarray sum in this first of all i am going to create my maximum uh, subarray maximum sum is equal to integer integer dot minimum value that is minus infinity after that in the inner loop in the second inner loop i am going to initialize my current sum int current sum is equal to zero after that what i am doing in the third loop that is in the place in all in the place of printing subarray uh, here i am going to calculate the sum of my given subarray so current sum is equal to current sum plus arr of k right and finally uh, in the place of printing next line just check if my current sum if my current sum is greater than my maximum sum then here what i am doing i am changing the value of maximum sum is equal to current sum that's all and after completing all loops all the iterations just here uh, print the value of maximum sum maximum sum ms that's all save this and here we will pass our small array that we taken as example that is 1 minus 3 comma 2. So we know that here the maximum subarray sum is 2. So if I run this code then we will get output as 2. So I will call the function that is uh, max subarray sum. Let me remove this subarray sum. Yeah. Save this thing and run. Here it is showing me error. What's the error? Yeah, I need to remove this line and yeah, I need to remove this extra packet. Save this and run. What's the error? It is showing me error somewhere. Uh, bracket, there is a mismatch of bracket. I think so. No, uh, for loop, for loop, uh, inner for loop. Yeah, here uh, statement terminator should be here, right? That's all. So let me remove here yeah 
now save this code so this is the code for calculating maximum sub array sort so if i run this particular code then i will get output as 2 because i have calculated already calculated the maximum sub array sum for the given array that is 1 minus 3 2 here the maximum sub array sum is 2 because the greatest the biggest element here is 2 itself by adding all the sub arrays the sum is always less than 2 that is the element itself so i will get the my maximum sub array sum as 2 so let me run this code So you can see that I got my maximum sub array sum as 2. Here let me um, write here maximum max sub array sum is plus yeah now save this and again run. You can see that my maximum sub array for the provided array, uh, the maximum sub array sum is 2. So, this is a brute force approach. Here, we are running three loops in the first outer loop, second uh, outer loop, and the uh, inner loop. Here, we are running three loops. So, here we are running three loops. We are running three loops. So, this is not an efficient code. First of all, the time complexity of this code is big of n cube because we are performing three loops and in the three in the three loops we are performing each operations right so the co time complexity for this code is big of n cube and space complexity is big of n so we'll mainly focus on time complexity in most of the cases right so this is considered as a bad as a bad code and this approach just we did now we just approached the question by our logic this is known as brute force approach brute force approach and this is not efficient way or the efficient algorithm so in the next video we are going to learn the uh, efficient code for printing maximum sub array sum by using the algorithm that is known as kadan's algorithm so in this question first of all let me dry run this let me dry run such that you will understand it what is going on in our code initially my current sum is zero afterwards my uh, i am what i am doing i am doing the current sum is equals to current sum plus err of k so err of k is initially 1 right so my current sum will become 1 and my maximum sum is minus infinity right so i am going to compare that my current sum is greater than maximum sum yeah here you can see that my current sum is greater than maximum sum so what i am doing i am doing the i am changing the value of maximum sum as from minus infinity to 1 after that here my current sum will become minus 2 after that here my current sum will become 0 in all these cases you can see that my maximum sum is greater than the current sum so if statement will not get executed after that here my current sum is minus 3 after that here my current sum is minus 1 after that finally my current sum will become 2 and my maximum sum is we know that here 1 we can say here my current sum is greater than maximum sum if this condition is true what i am gonna do my maximum sum will become my current sum that is 2 so my maximum sum will become 2 and finally what i am doing i am gonna print the value of maximum sum so this is known as brute force approach and this is not efficient way or efficient algorithm now in the next video we are going to see uh, how to approach the sub array maximum sub array sum problem by using algorithm that is known as kadan's algorithm now we are going to see the efficient approach to solve maximum sub array sum and this algorithm is known as kadan's algorithm so to understand the basic uh, fundamental of kadan's algorithm let us consider a, uh, a scenario that uh, uh, if I add a positive number with a positive number, then it will give us a positive number, right? So, this is a good condition. This is a good condition because we are calculating maximum sub array. So, if I add a positive number with a positive number, then the output is a, a big positive number, right? Good. This condition is a good condition. After it, let us consider our second condition that if I add a big positive number with a small negative number with a small negative number this will give us a uh, positive number but a small positive number so this is also considered as a good condition this is also a good condition and in the third condition let us consider that i am adding a small positive number with a big negative number and this will give me a negative number and in the case of calculating maximum sub array sum 
we don't need this kind of condition so kadang identified this condition and he applied a logic here that this is not a good condition and we don't use negative numbers when it comes to calculating maximum sub array sum so what we do if we got a negative number then we don't need to keep the negative number for calculating other maximum sub array sum because we are calculating the maximum that is nothing but a negative uh, that is nothing but positive value so when it when we get maximum sub array sum as negative just replace it by zero so if we get i am telling again that when we are going to calculate maximum sub array sum if we get my current sum or uh, if i get the sum of my sub array uh, is zero then just replace the sum by zero so if i add if i am adding two numbers in the as i am adding two elements in my array and if i got a negative number as my output then just replace the output by zero this is the fundamental understanding of kadans algorithm so this is the understanding so i hope you have understood let me run the sum of current sum or the given array so here this is my given array right so i am going to first of all initialize my current sum by zero and minus infinity by uh, m maximum sum by minus infinity right here first of all the condition is if my current sum is greater than my maximum sum then what i am doing i am doing maximum sum is equals to my current sum that's all right so according to kadan if i got a negative number then don't consider that negative number replace the negative number by zero this is the logic behind the kadan algorithm so uh, first of all let me dry run this here the first element is minus 2 so the sum current sum is minus 2 so in the place of minus 2 don't consider uh, the negative value just put zero here so my current sum will become zero after it here minus infinity so minus infinity is less than zero or in other words zero is greater than minus infinity so my maximum sum will also become zero after it uh, minus 3 my, uh, minus 2 minus 3 here minus 5 uh, we can see that uh, the current sum is zero and minus 3 that is zero minus 3 is minus 3 so again negative number so in the place of negative number replace it by zero after it uh, Uh, current sum is zero. After it, error of k is four. So uh, current sum that is zero plus four uh, is equal to current sum will become four here, right? And maximum sum here will remain four. Here again, current sum is four. That is maximum sum is less than my current sum. If this condition is true, what I am doing? I am gonna do this. So my my maximum sum will become four. After it, uh, uh, the current sum is four and minus one. That is the current sum will become three. and maximum sum will remain 4 after that uh, uh, the current sum is 3 and uh, the element is minus 2 that is 3 minus 2 is 1 and current sum is 4 after that uh, uh, my current sum is 1 and the element is 1 that is 1 plus 1 is 2 and the, my current sum will remain 4 after that uh, uh, phi my error of k is phi and the current sum is 2 so i will add these two so uh, the output will be 7 now the current sum will get changed by 7 after that 7 and error of 3 is minus 3 that is 7 minus 3 is 4 so my current sum will become 4 and my maximum sum will become 7 so i will print my maximum sum value is 7 to my user so this is how the kadans algorithm works so first of all let me uh, run the pseudo code for this thing so first of all i am going to create my current sum is equals to 0 after it i am going to create a maximum sum and initialize it with minus infinity that is nothing but integer dot minimum value after it i am going to run my for loop for int i is equals to 0 and i should be less than arr dot length after that i plus 1 in this what i am going to do uh, i am going to do current sum is equals to current sum plus arr of k arr of i after that if my current sum if my current sum is less than 0 then what i do just simply do current sum is equals to 0 after that i am going to change the ma ma value of uh, ms that is ms is equals to max dot max of the two values that is current sum comma maximum sum so whatever the maximum value between this that will uh, get assigned to my maximum sum value after the uh, complete my for loop and finally print my uh, maximum sum that's all so this is the code for kadans algorithm in the previous brute force approach we have solved the question 
by using three loops and the time complexity of that code is big of n cube here that we are using one loop basically one loop and we are performing n operation so the time complexity will become big of n here the time complexity is cubic equation that is uh, the time complexity will give a cubic graph right whereas this is a linear equation so this will give us a linear time complexity and kadans algorithm is one of the most asked questions when it comes to interview and placements right in interview for placements so remember guys this is the code for kadans algorithm and kadans algorithm is the most important one and it is used to calculate the maximum subarrays sum and remember this is the pseudo code for this and i hope you have understood that in the, when we got a negative number just don't consider that negative number and replace that negative number by zero this is the main fundamental logic of kadans algorithm so this is the code pseudo code first of all let me code this thing and you will understand it even more better first of all let me create my function public public static void void no ah uh, void after that uh, max or let me write kadan kadan will give kadan in this i am going to pass my uh, err int err after that uh, first of all let me create my current sum int current sum is equal to zero after that int maximum sum is equals to uh, int maximum sum ms is equals to max dot minimum value minimum max dot integer dot max integer integer dot minimum value integer dot minimum value after that uh, i am going to run my loop so for int i is equals to zero and i should be less than arr dot length after it i plus plus in this i am going to do current sum is equals to current sum plus arr of k right and finally i am going to check if my current sum the value i got current sum is less than zero then what i am going to do i am going to replace it by zero simply after that uh, i am comparing uh, my ms is equals to uh, math math dot math of ms comma cs current sum comma cs right finally after completing the loop print system dot out dot print and uh, here maximum max sub sum of sub arrays of sub arrays is plus uh, ms that's all this is the code for kadans algorithm here uh, actually i have to give i so this is the code for kadans algorithm here let me call uh, my kadans here so kadans and pass err as my output and i already know that uh, my maximum sub array sum for this is 2 so if i run this code then i, I should get my output as 2 so let me run this code you can see that my maximum sub array sum is maximum sum of the sub arrays is 2 so we already know that the for this particular array for this particular array the maximum sub array is 2 so our kadans is working good and uh, uh, remember guys uh, that kadans is a efficient code for calculating uh, uh, maximum sub array sum and here and i want to tell you that uh, kadans will work for all the arrays and if all the elements provided is negative numbers then we have to view suppose if the provided elements all the elements are negative then we are what we are doing if the elements are zero if the elements are less than zero then replace it by zero so kadans will not work for the uh, for elements which are all negative for that we have to create a separate condition and for that condition we have to print uh, whatever the least negative number in that particular array so uh, for uh, the for the condition that uh, all the elements which are provided is negative for that particular condition we have to create a specific scenario we have to for that particular scenario we have to create a particular condition that's all so this is known as kadans algorithm and remember guys that most of the in most of the interviews question if you start uh, for uh, for 10 companies at least in one of the companies kadans will get asked so kadans is the most important algorithm and it is a easy algorithm so everybody can understand that this is just a simple code yeah, it is like a, uh four five lines code 
the in four five lines code there is a lot of logic and we already discussed the logic behind kadan salvar top and how it works and what is the code behind it with that being said let us uh, solve an interesting question in the next video now we are going to do an important question that is the name of the question is trapping water question now this is a median le medium level question and you you will find this question in lead code hacker rank and all those platforms and uh, uh, these sort of questions are asked when it comes to interviews and uh, a lot of uh, placement cells so these sort of questions is asked and you can find this question this particular question in your dsa sheet and uh, in the dsa sheet that we have provided this question is a uh, 22nd question so this is a important question and a medium level question so in this question user has given us a height array and uh, the elements of uh, height array represents the height of each bar so 4 4 2 0 6 3 2 5 are the heights of the given bar now first of all let us understand the question uh, what the meaning what is the meaning of this question and uh, what is asked in this question and what we are going to calculate all these things for so first of all let us understand this question so first of all user has given a height array and the elements of our height array represents the height of our bar so this is the representation of bars so you can uh, visualize bars in the form of uh, buildings right so uh, the bars which are provided The, the nothing but elements are non zero so the element should be greater than or equals to greater than or equals to zero right this is the condition and uh, after that the uh, width of each bar that is uh, here the width of each bar this is one each bar width is one after that uh, uh, to understand this question let us consider that uh, let us consider these bars as buildings after it after some time uh, the clouds will form here and the water starts to fall in between these buildings and some water will get trapped in between these buildings right so this is the trapped water trapped water these are the trapped water now the thing which is asked in this question is to calculate the water the water trapped in this in between this building trapped water in between these buildings so this is the uh, overlay or the structure of this question and remember guys that the condition here is uh, the bars are non negative it means that uh, we don't find any uh, uh, case in which uh, the given height is like this that is minus 1 or minus 2 is not possible in this question and some variations you may find uh, negative numbers also but in our in our question given that uh, uh, n elements are non negative and the width of bar is 1 i hope you have understood the concept of this question now let us try uh, let us uh, try to uh, understand how we can do this question first of all logically now this is our height array right this is our height array and the elements are 4 2 0 6 3 2 5 these are my bar heights and water will fall in between this um, in between the bars and some water will get trapped right okay some water will get trapped here now the width of each bar we already know that the width of each bar is 1 so uh, first of all let us uh, understand how we can do this particular question manually first of all you can see that the height of the first bar is 4 and uh, this is the water level right so from the ground the water level is the water level from the ground is 4 is 4 after that uh, in the third third element that is our third element 0 from the ground the water level is 0 uh, 4 four after that in the sixth element the whatever the water will fall on to on top of six bar will spill into left and right after that in the third bar in the third bar uh, the water which will get trapped the water level is 5 after that the water level is 2 after that 5 on the second element the water level is 5 after that this on the final element whatever the water falls on to the fifth bar will get spill here spill here so how we can calculate this uh, how we can calculate our our water level or the trapped water here so let us consider a scenario that this is my bar this is my bar and there are this is my left boundary and right boundary and this is my trapped water let us consider that my bar height is x from the ground and from the ground the water level is w so can i write that my trapped water that my trapped water trapped water is equals to water level minus the height of my bar into this is the width right this is the width so w minus x will give me this portion this portion of my water uh, multiplying with the width that is a w i t t h width that is nothing but given in my question is 
that will give me the whatever the water which is trapped in this question that will give me the trapped water so this is the logic this is the logical formula that we have obtained so w is the water level from the ground and x is the bar height into width width is given in the question so can i write the formula that my trapped water my trapped water is equals to water level water level minus given bar height given bar height into width and here we ignore width because the given width is 1 and we, any number multiplied by 1 will give me the same answer so we'll ignore uh, width here now let me erase this first of all so this is the trapped water in between the bar and this is the height of my bar that is 4 2 0 6 3 2 5 now let us try run the formula that we have obtained from our logic and let us try run on to our given example so the in the on the first bar on the first element whatever the water uh, falls on to the first element will spill here will after it will spill on right and left such that no water will get trapped on the first element on the second element the water level is 4 and the height of my bar is 2 so according to the formula here uh, 4 is my water level and minus 2 is my height into 1 that will give me here in the on the first element the water which will get trapped is a trapped water is equals to 0 because whatever the water falling on to the first element will spill on the both sides such that no water will get trapped on the second element you can see that the water height is 4 and the element uh, uh, element that is bar height is 2 into 1 so the water which will get trapped here is 2 on the third element on the third element uh, the water level is 4 4 and the bar height is 0 into the width width is 1 so the total water which will get trapped on the third element is 4 after that on the fifth uh, on the fourth element whatever the water uh, falls onto the fifth element will get spill here spill here so here the total water which will get trapped is 0 after that on the fifth element that is the bar height is 3 uh, the total water which will get trapped here is water level what is the water level here you can see that our water level is 5 so water level minus bar height bar height here bar height is 3 into 1 so it will give me 2 as my water water trapped after that on the second bar height element the water level is constant that is 5 minus bar height is now 2 that will give me 3 after that on the fifth element whatever the water that will get uh, fall on to the uh, last element will get uh, flowed on both sides such that no water will get trapped here the total water which will get trapped is zero so to calculate the total amount the total amount of water that will get trapped is equals to here zero zero by adding all these things we can calculate uh, the total water which will get trapped in between the buildings or in between the bars so zero plus two plus four plus zero plus uh, here 0 plus 2 plus 4 plus 0 plus 2 plus 3 plus 0 so this is the total water that will get trapped here right this is the total amount of water that will get trapped in between the uh, bars so uh, let me add this that will give me 6 plus 5 that is 11 so the total amount of water that will get trapped in between the given bars for the given example is 11 so we will print 11 to my user as my answer so this is the concept of this question now here uh, we have manually calculated and uh, by using our logic and brains we have uh, calculated the total water trapped for this particular given array so the total elements in our array is 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 so the total elements present here is 7 and for 7 elements for 7 bars we have calculated uh, manually how to calculate trapped water for example that our user suppose our user have given us one lakh elements one lakh bars for that scenario we can't calculate manually right by drawing all the diagrams and all the things we can't calculate total water which will get trapped here so the formula we have obtained is trapped water is equals to water level minus bar height into the given width here width is one so we'll ignore it so uh, width is given by our user and bar height is also given by our user 
and if we can find a logical way or logical formula to calculate water level then this question is sorted then we can easily do this question so how we can calculate water level or what is the logical things we have to understand to calculate water level for a particular given bar so to do that let us take some scenarios the formula we have obtained is trapped water trapped water is equals to water level minus bar height into width so this is the formula here width is 1 so we don't need to multiply it again and again so this is the formula we have obtained and in this question the only thing which is causing problem here is we don't know water level and we are gonna find a way we are going to learn how we can calculate water level by doing some logical steps but we do know bar height and width so these two things is sorted the only thing which is causing problem here is how we can calculate bar uh, water level so to calculate water level let us take some scenarios first scenario is a single bar let us take a single bar for single bar scenario this is my ground and this is my bar right so water will fall onto the bar and whatever the water which will get fall on this particular bar will get spill here and spill here so for single bar the total water which will get trapped is equals to water trapped is equals to can i write zero right for single bar the total water which will get trapped is zero after that, let us take two bars for two bars in two bars we again get three scenarios this is my first scenario that is my first bar is greater than less than uh, the second bar so whatever the water falls onto the sec uh, second bar that is the largest bar will spill onto the first bar after it, it will spill again so uh, let us take another scenario that is my first bar is greater than my second bar so water will fall here and it will get spill again and spill again for equal heights for two bars the height is if the height is equal let us take this and this so whatever the water fall here will spill here and spill here so for two bars for two bars the water which will get trapped here is zero so from this two scenario can i write a can i extract a statement that uh, the condition is uh, uh, to trap water we need minimum three uh, bars or more than three so the number of bars the minimum number of bars that we need to trap water in between the bars is greater than two this is my first uh, condition that i have obtained from my uh, cases now let us take uh, patterns let us take patterns let us consider that uh, uh, let us consider a ascending pattern ascending order uh, the height of each bar is increasing uh, after each indexes so this is the pattern so whatever the water will fall onto the top of this ascending bar pattern will spill 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 such that no water will get trapped here so for ascending order pattern bars the water which will get trapped is zero similarly similar thing goes for descending pattern also descending pattern also so water water fall here spill here spill here and spill similarly goes so can i write my second condition that is for ascending or descending bars the total water which will get trapped is equals to zero so these are the two conditions that I have obtained now these are my extreme conditions now let us talk about a another scenario so let us consider a three bar case scenarios and this is my left boundary and this is the bar and this is my right, right boundary let us consider that uh, the uh, left boundary height is four after that uh, my middle boundary the bar the let us consider its height as two after that my right boundary height is six so the water some water whatever the water falls here will get trapped some water will get trapped here right so can i write here can i see that my water level from the ground is four so can i write that this is my left boundary left boundary and this is my right boundary right this is my right boundary and this is my left boundary and from this diagram from this case from this case can i write that my water level is equals to minimum of left boundary left boundary comma right boundary left boundary comma right boundary right so here the whatever the water uh, water level on the second bar is four right so this is the formula that we have extracted that is uh, when it comes to three bars when it comes to three bars water level is equals to minimum of left boundary minus right boundary so this is the formula that we have obtained now let us let me expand the same scenario for n amount of bars 
so let us take many bars more than three let us consider that this is my uh, first bar this is my second bar and this is my third and the this is my uh, uh, fourth bar so these are the three bars and the first bar height is 10 second bar height is 6 and the third bar height is 2 and the last bar height is 8 now some water will get trapped on the uh, second bar right on top of second bar so this is the water that will get trapped on top of second bar so here what is the water level that is trapped on top of second bar you can see that the water level from the ground from the ground is 8 but the minimum between left boundary here the minimum of left boundary left boundary is minimum will give 6 here because the minimum of left and right will give me 6 right so here whatever the formula that we have uh, derived logically is uh, not working so can I modify my formula that is my water level that will get trapped on a particular bar on top of a particular bar is equals to minimum of left max boundary left max boundary comma right max right max so this is my modified formula here you can see that on the left side of my second bar the maximum element is 10 here on the right side the maximum element is 8 and the water level which is which got trapped here is 8 so let me check whether the my formula that we have obtained is right or not so minimum of 10 comma 8 that is that will give me 8 and the water which is uh, trapped actually is 8 because these both uh, these both values are same so so can i rewrite my formula that is uh, total water that will get trapped is equals to water level minus boundary height into width and i have obtained my formula for calculating water level that is water level is equals to minimum of left max boundary left max boundary comma right max boundary right max boundary so this is the formula that we have successfully obtained now let us try run the formula to whether to check whether the uh, formula which we got is right or not so this is my given height right 4 2 0 6 3 2 5 these are my bar heights now let me dry run the formula that we have obtained so let me dry run this formula so first of all let, let us go on to the first element so the we have to calculate left max and the right max left max and the right max and we have to calculate the minimum of the left max and the right max that is my water level and the bar height is actually given and which is all we already know that is one so for the first element the left max is itself the element itself so left max will become left max is equal to 4 and right max you can see that on the on the right ma on the right side the maximum bar height is 6 so my right max will become 6 so my water level will become here uh, 4 a minimum of a minimum of 4 comma 6 so it will give me 4 after that my bar height so according to my formula this is my formula according to my formula water that will get trapped on a particular bar is equals to water level that is 4 minus 4 into 1 that will give me 0 so on the first element the water which will get trapped is equals to 0 on the second element on the second element left max is equals to you can see that uh, left max is now 4 left max is 4 here and right max right max is 6 so right max is equals to 6 so the total water level for the second element is equals to minimum of 4 comma 6 that will give me 4 after that according to my formula total water which will get trapped is equals to water level minus bar height now the bar height is 2 bar height is 2 into 1 is equals to that will give me 2 so the water uh, that will get trapped here is 2 after that for 0 height bar 0 height bar the right max is 6 the right max is equals to 6 and the left max you can see that for 0 element the left max is 4 the left max is equal to 4 so my water level will be uh, minimum of 6 comma 4 that will give me again 4 after that uh, uh, total water which will get trapped on the zero height bar is equal to 4 minus 0 that will give me 4 so 4 we are going to write here after that for sixth bar for a sixth height bar whatever the water fall here 
here the right max the right max is uh, here the right max for this uh, bar is 6 this is my right max for my sixth height bar so right max is equal to 5 and the left max you can see that uh, the left max is 4 so the minimum is 4 after that 4 uh, water level is equal to minimum of 5 comma 4 that will give me 4 uh, according to my formula total water that will get trapped is equal to 4 minus bar height 6 that will give me minus 2 so if we got a value which is a negative then we will uh, write the total water which will get trapped is equal to zero so on the sixth bar height we will write total water which will get trapped is equal to zero after that on the third bar on the third height bar you can see that the right max is five and the left max is six so for this for this element right max is equal to five and left max is equal to uh, six uh, left max is equal to six and right max is equal to five so the water level is equal to minimum of 5 comma 6 that will give me 5 after that after that my bar height so total water which will get trapped is equal to uh, 5 minus 3 that will give me 2 so the water level which will get trapped here is 2 after that second height bar the water level is equal to minimum of right max right max is 5 and the left max you can see that the left max is 6 so it will give me 5 and total water that will get trapped is equal to uh, water level minus bar height so water level is 5 and the bar height is bar height is 2 so it will give me 3 it will give me 3 and for a final element for our final element the right max is the element itself so right max is equal to 5 and the left max you can see that on the left side the elements are 2 3 6 0 2 4 you can see that on these elements the maximum height element is 6 so my left max will become 6 after that my water level water level is equal to minimum of 6 comma 5 that will give me 5 and my total tra wa trapped water is equal to water level minus bar height so water what is the bar height here that is 5 so 5 minus 5 that will give me 0 so here the water level which is uh, which got trapped on top of fifth bar fifth height bar is 0 now we are going to add all the trapped water that we got E line by line so 0 plus 2 plus 4 that will give me 6 plus 2 8 plus 3 11 so the answer is 11 so our formula is working fine and we have uh, we have calculated and dry run the, the formula for the given example so what is the formula so total water that will get trapped is equal to water level so how to calculate water level we have calc uh, we have obtained a formula that is water level is equal to minimum of left max boundary so let us consider that this is my element this is my bar height so we are going to calculate the left max boundaries whatever suppose let us consider that the uh, left max boundaries let us consider that uh, this is my uh, element that we are calculating water level for and this is the element we have let us consider that the left element boundary height is 8 and this is 2 and this is 10 so for this element for this two element the left max will become 8 and the right max will become 10 suppose let us consider that uh, here we have another uh, another bar that is 5 so for this particular element for this element 2 uh, the left max is 8 and on the right there are two elements 10 comma 5 but we are going to calculate the maximum element only so on the right side what is the maximum element the elements are 10 comma 5 on these two elements on these two bars what is the maximum height uh, that is 10 so right max will become 10 for so for this element left max will become this and right max will become this so here's the catch how we can code our formula how, or how we are going to code or what is the logic to find left max or right max so to calculate left max and right max we are going to use auxiliary arrays or in other words you can call it as helper arrays so we are going to use helper arrays to calculate left max and right max when i, go, I am going to code the actual code for this question you will understand it even more better but we are go, uh, remember guys for this particular question to calculate left max boundary and the right max boundary we are going to use auxiliary arrays or in other words helper arrays so this is the formula and uh, we have already dry run so let me re rewrite the formula that is my total trapped water is equals to water level minus bar height into my width into my width this is the formula 
for calculating my total trapped water on top of a particular bar and water level water level is equals to minimum of left max left max comma right max right max so let me uh, uh, calculate left max and right max basically we are going to create two extra arrays for this question and uh, these two extra arrays are basically what we are calling we are calling as helper arrays so let me create the left max and right max array such that you will understand it even more better so this is my given height 4206325 so these are my given height of my bars now i am going to create a left max array left max array will store the maximum uh, left max of that particular bar the size of this bar is the height length so uh, new int index the size is height dot length height dot length so here for the for the first iteration for the first element the left max is 4 left max is 4 after it on the second element you can see that we are going to check this is my particular element right we are going to check the left side of it uh, whatever the highest element we have that will become my left max so for the uh, second element for the second element that is the height 2 the left max will be will become 4 so we will store 4 here after it for the third element the left max is again 4 after that for the fourth element that is height 6 the left max is 4 so again we will store here 4 after it for the fifth element you can see that uh, the left max is uh, the maximum element here for the third height element is 6 so my left max will become 6 after it uh, for 2 left max will become 6 for 5 left max will become 6 so this is my left max elements left max elements these are my left max elements after it let us calculate right max so we will start calculating right max uh, from on, we are going to check the right elements the right side elements of a given element so here let us start with the i is equals to zero index so here you can see that the right max element the maximum element on the right side is six so it will store six after it for second element here again six so it will store six for zero height the maximum left max height is six so again six after that for sixth element for six height element here you can see that on these three elements three to five the maximum height is five so my maximum left max will right max will become five after it for three again it will become five right five after it for two it will become five and finally for the last element the right max will uh, is equals to the element itself so these are my right max elements so this is how we are going to create our helper arrays uh, the size of my helper arrays that is left max and right max size is equals to height dot length so whatever the user that will provide uh, the array uh, that length is equals to my left max or right max array size i hope you have understood uh, the logic and the working of my how we can calculate left max and right max uh, after calculating the left max and right max we are going to take the minimum value of uh, uh, the, bit, uh, uh, the the minimum value of right, left max and right max that will become my water level after that if we can able to find the water level then we can easily calculate the trapped water on top of a particular bar so this is the logic behind this uh, question and i hope you have understood the question if you haven't understood uh, some parts uh, for beginners for uh, the students who are going uh, who are doing coding for the first time this question may sound a little bit difficult but again watch the video and uh, it might take some time you have to do the same question on paper and, uh, and try to form the logic by yourself first of all after forming the logic try to do it on paper first after that we are going to code this thing so the formula is total trapped water is equals to water level water level so on this is the water level for this bar so what is the uh, for bar 2 for bar 2 the water level is four and bar height is two so this will give me the water that will get trapped on top of two bar second bar so this is the logic here this is the formula so how we can calculate water level water level is equal to minimum of left max comma right max so we are going to create two arrays left max array right max array so left max will store the value suppose let us take this is our element 
so we are going to calculate the elements we are going to check what are the elements that are present on the left side of my element so what the highest element the value the highest value which is present on the left side of my element that will become my left max of that particular index after it, the right max for this particular element is we are going to check whatever the highest value that is present on my right side that will become the right max of that particular index element i hope you have understood how we are going to calculate left max and right max after it, by finding left max and right max we can calculate water level by finding water level we can easily calculate the total water that will get trapped on top of, of a particular bar so this is the logic behind this code now let us code this thing and understand how the code works first of all let me create in the main program let me create height array height is equals to what is uh, what are the example we have uh, 4206 4206 four, 06 three, two, five. Three, two, five. so this is the array we have taken this is the height of the bars that we have taken as an example for our question now let me create my function public static and the return type of my function is int because it is going to uh, it is going to return the uh, trapped water value to my user so the type uh, the integer the, uh, the return type function is integer after that i am going to write my function name let me write function name as trap water trap water in the trap water i am passing uh, height my array height array h e i g h t height array after that uh, first of all uh, we need to calculate first of all the thing first thing we have to calculate is calculate left max left max boundary left max boundary for each element in the form of a and i am going to store whatever the value that we got in a array after that uh, same thing for the right max for the right max right max right max uh, in this right max boundary for my given array after that uh, i am going to run a loop in the loop i am going to find out the total trapped water trapped water so this so these are the three steps that i am going to perform to calculate the total water that is get that got trapped in between the bars so first of all it is showing me some error this method must be written okay okay so first thing is uh, i am going to create an array that is left max left max the size of the left max array will be is equals to the int so let me first of all calculate the uh, length of my height array so int n is equals to height dot length so i am going to store the size of the array the, the size of the parameter the size of the given array in the value of n after that I am going to create my int left max array and the size of the, my left max array is equal to n. After that, uh, I am going to assign, first of all, I am going to assign the uh, left max 0th index. Left max 0th index is equal to the first element itself. The left max the uh, left max 0th index is equal to the height 0th index because we know that uh, for uh, the first element, the left max is the element itself. That's why I'm going to assign left max of 0th index is equal to height of 0th index. After that, I'm going to run a loop for int i is equal to int i is equal to 1. After that, i should be less than n. After that, i plus plus. Here, I'm going to uh, assign the value for left max of i is equal to math dot max of math dot max of uh, left max of i minus 1 i am going to check left right, left side right so uh, the indexes will reduce so i am going to write i minus 1 after that my height height of ith element so whatever the maximum element between left max of uh, left max i minus 1 and the height of the present array that is uh, that will become my left max of that particular index so this is how i am going to calculate the left max for our array after that uh, uh, let me create my right max array right max is equal to the size of my right max is n 
that is my provided array size after that similarly i'm going to run up before that uh, let me assign the last element because the last element present in our array that will uh, the element itself will become my left max so right max so right max of n minus 1 is equals to is equals to height of n minus 1 after that i am going to run my loop for int i is equals to from n minus 2 n minus 2 after that i should be greater than or equals to 0 after that i minus minus here i am going to assign uh, right max right max of i is equals to math dot max of math dot max of height of i comma right of i plus 1 i plus 1 right max of i plus 1 so this is how i am going to calculate the right max and the left max of my given array so here right max and i have created now left max and the right max these things are known as a helper array uh, by using this array, I am going to calculate the trap total, right? Because uh, uh, so these are known as helper arrays. After that, first of all, let me run, run my loop. Uh, going to run my loop for int i. Before that, let me create uh, trap a uh, variable integer type variable that uh, trap daughter is equal to zero. This variable will return me the total uh, trap daughter that is that got trapped in between the bars. So after that I am going to run my loop for int i is equal to 0 and i should be less than n i plus plus i plus plus here I am going to calculate my water level first of all water level int water level int water level is equal to uh, I have already told now that my water level is equal to math dot min of left max minus uh, comma right max so math dot minimum of minimum of right max of i and left max of i after that uh, my total trapped water trapped water is equals to i am going to add after each iteration for for that i am going to write plus is equals to plus is equals to uh, water level water level minus my bar height so what is the bar height height of ith element into width width here let me create width uh, a variable int width <coughs> is equal to i am going to assign it with 1 after calculating all these things finally i am going to return return trap water trap water value and finally here i am going to print a System dot out dot print the total trapped water between bars is plus I'm going to call my function trap water and the in that I'm going to pass my height array and finally this is how uh, this code will return me the total amount of water that you are trapped in between the bar. Now let me run this code. Let me run this code. You can see that we got answer that uh, the total water that got trapped in between the bars is 11 and we have we already did a dry run and in the dry run we got our answer as 11 so the answer which we got by coding is correct now let me explain the, the code again so in the first step we have created a left max array so left max array will calculate suppose this is my element so uh, this uh, remember guys that my trapped water is the formula for trapped water is equals to water level minus boundary height into width this is the formula for calculating the trapped water in between bars so the only problem we have got in this question is we don't know how to calculate water level so for that we have created some logic and uh, to calculate water level of a particular bar of of that particular bar uh, we have created two arrays left max and right max and the minimum between left max and right max is equals to my water level so this is the only thing we have uh, formed here this is the only problem that we got so to calculate our water level we have created two uh, arrays 
two helper arrays that is left max and right max so what does left max do suppose let us take this is our element and the, the what are the elements uh, some elements will present on the left side right so the highest value the highest bar which is present on the left side of my element that will become my left max i am going to store on that particular index of on that particular index suppose let us take my uh, the index of a particular bar let us take the index of this bar is 1 uh, so i have created a uh, left max array uh, that the size of my left max array size is equals to my given array size that is height height size so on the first index of my left max array on the left on the first index of my left left max array i am going to store the left max value that is present uh, uh, for this particular element similar go, similar things goes for right max so i am going to calculate whatever the highest element which is present on the right side of my of my element and i am going to store the value of right max on that particular right max index so this is how we are going to use right max and left max after that we are going to calculate the minimum between the right max and the left max so here you can see that uh, we, are we are calculating water level is equals to math dot minimum value of right max and left max of that particular index after that uh, uh, our trap daughter we already know that our fa the formula for trap daughter is equals to water level minus height of that particular bar into width so width is given by our user and height is given by our user and we already uh, uh, did form a logic to find out the water level so this is how we calculated the trapped water so if i give width as 2 then the whole question will get changed so, so if i run the uh, code then i will get answer differently so you can see that uh, here the answer is 22 so this is how uh, this is an important question and if you didn't understand this question then rewind the video again and watch and uh, you know, practice by yourself and uh, try to code the, th the same question in your laptop such that you will understand it even more better such that we have com completed our chapter arrays and I am going to uh, we are going to start our next chapter that is the sorting algorithms with that being said I will see you in the next one.